Oh, you know what I was going to ask you guys about? Uh, this might be too much. Yeah. Um, we ask every guest this question, but I think we let ourselves off the hook when it was our episode. So I want to know about your first crush. <laughs> <gasps> I know. I'm pretty sure I mentioned mine. Did we so I'm answer not, that? I'm not, I'm not. The clock is ticking, Sophie. Go. Pen is not participating. I was just filled with feelings. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where? Which one? You know. You, 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 your password like was boy crazy the first nine one, nine, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy crazy sixty four. I think. But 64? you know, kind of like our guest today, you'll hear um, him say that his first crush he can remember was in kindergarten. I think mm-hmm. me too. Like it was too, so actually. early. I think I was. I think I was six years old. I remember there was a boy who was like a neighbor, and. Uh, we performed the tango for our parents, Aww. and he had it held a, a, t- a rose between his teeth. I remember that vividly. when you were five. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, you have very colorful, like romantic stories, Sophie. I love them. <laughs> um, as an aside, I like really one day want to write a screenplay about Sophie's different love stories. She knows this. I like interviewed her once, and I still think about it. Maybe one day. <laughs> maybe one day. Um, I my first crush was also in kindergarten. His name was Jean Carlos Ortega. He had beautiful green eyes and I would think about him every day at nap time. I would like fall, I, just, I would like drift into nap time thinking about Giancarlo. That is Counting so it's Giancarlo's. funny because it's poetic and it just seems so mature and you were five? Five. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just it's funny. Nava's always think, had it in her. Yeah. No, look, I mean I can remember those very deep stirrings of like that feeling at that age and 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 having a crush. There was I don't quite remember her name. It was like Christine or Christina. I don't remember which one, and it was like a, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was it was a thing, you know, a crush. But wow, the the, the fact that we at that age are having like, yeah, those n- whatever feelings. notions those are, it's just I, I yeah. want to know more about the like the the psychology and the biology of that. You know, who isn't going to be able to tell us anything about that is uh, is uh, well, not only none of us, but not our guest today. Uh, yeah. We've got um, he was so much else that this was. Uh, lovely conversation. I was going to say it's one of my favorite conversations. I might say that a lot, but it ends up being true in its own way every time. Mm. Um, Just wait, because Penn, in this episode, there is a moment where he falls in love with our guest. Yeah, you hear it, (laughs) and I will name it, but there's a moment. Yeah, and actually, I'm not kidding. But watch this one on YouTube, because you can see it on, I'm like, I think Penn is about to propose to Rami. (laughs) Like, Penn is in love. Tears came to my eyes after the moment passed, because I was just like, it's it was refreshing. You'll hear it. Whatever. Yeah. You don't need to build it up now. That now the bar is really high. And it's <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have Rami Youssef. He's he's. Uh, if you don't know who that is already, he's a comedian, actor, writer, director. He's got a huge show that he won. Um, uh, we're still unclear if it's an Emmy or Golden Globe. Uh, <laughs> uh, for his show, which is his own name, Rami. Uh, it's, it's about a millennial Muslim American navigating the realities and absurdities of modernity and identity. Could we get any more itties in there? Mm. Um, while the fictional Rami struggles to find his place in the world, that is just not the case with this one. <laughs> he's killing it. He's killing the game. Um, he's got a Peabody, two Golden Globes. Uh, he, he's co-created Netflix's Mo. Uh, from the comedian Mo Amer. I think I'm saying that name correctly. I hope I am. Um, Rami was just a delight and he really really drilled into our very premise of this of this whole middle school period so uh, we hope you stick around welcome to pod crushed we're your hosts i'm pen i'm nava and i'm sophie and i think we could have been your middle school besties practicing our secret handshake that we do publicly but is still somehow a secret i don't know if you know this on the way up here there's like the guys who do the the scanning card yeah down at the yeah do you talk desk? to them yeah Okay, they love you. I know. They know your whole IMDb. This guy was like walking you through like Easy A. He's walking you through all the seasons of you. Like he was just like, you know who you're seeing, right? And then I'm just like, no, I know. And then he just like went through the whole. (laughs) No, I I was making sure that you know. Over time, I've discovered that, and I'm you know the few of them I've I've spoken with a lot, and um. Yeah, it's he takes it's, them to coffee every morning to brief them on how to greet a guest. Like, make, <laughs> make sure you don't sure, forget. Cause, cause don't I, forget that I was the mother Tucker. I had this. <laughs> don't leave out the stepfather. Yeah, Do yeah, not. yeah. And they didn't. <laughs> the stepfather came up. I mean, this was all during just the check-in process. Yeah, which yeah. Yeah. was ready. <laughs> two minutes. Not it's even. a two-minute process that <laughs> became ten because <laughs> there's just like genuine enthusiasm That's for you. Funny, but we had this like you know conversation about Easy A, which is such a good. That's really sweet. Yeah, it's so fun. Room. I'm just gonna have a real hot takey 
first question. Please. Um, you were what? Around about, I think you were in middle school as a Muslim in America after 9-11. Yeah. Is that accurate? Very accurate. So what was that like? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's wild. Like, I've been thinking about this period of time uh, a lot. Mm. I didn't think about that period for, like, 15 years. Mm. Like, I just mm. didn't even... It, like, happened, and I think it was really intense, and then I tried to just act like it didn't happen. Right. Then we did this episode of it um, in the first season of my show on Hulu, and then we got to... You know, I was writing all this stuff about the period, and then I was like, whoa, there's a lot that I didn't ever process. Right, right. And I think the big thing was it was just this thing of, like, we were there was only a few Muslim families, and then you kind of see what's happening on the news and, and whatever, and, and there's this fear. And we were right outside New York, too. So we're, mm -hmm. you know, my dad's working in New York. Everyone mm. has family there. And I think I realized... Uh, many years later, the level of fear wasn't just people kind of coming in. It was that self-fear of like, oh, wait, is what people are saying about us true? Mm -hmm. So there's this like fear you have of yourself. And I think that to me was the most interesting thing to zone into as I was writing. And, and now we're doing this like really wild animated show set in 2001 in middle school. Mm -hmm. It's about this family that uh, which I think is kind of real to where we were, where you're kind of getting looked at so much that there's this performance you start doing of like, no, no, we're so cool. <laughs> like you can't yeah. be afraid of us. And so yeah. the animated yeah. show is about this father with his kids and, you know, it's a whole family really. But uh, he sets out, you know, after that day to say that they're they're not just going to be the best fit. They're, they're going to be like the number one family. And okay. the show is called Number One <laughs> Happy Family USA. But that act of that performance, though, and kind of like yeah. uh, I think, you know, we're performers and we have like a um, a natural desire to want to be liked. But sure. then it's like really amped up where you're like, oh man, I feel like I'm on, I'm playing mega defense right now. Right. This idea of like, oh, is what, as you said, it's like they say about us true, you know, the quote unquote they and the quote unquote us. Right. Like, can you, I'm kind of interested, like at that time, what were some of those things, you know? I mean, like, I, I always put it this way where it's like, you you know, this is where, like, the uh, the word minority feels really real because you're, like, there are just fewer of us, mm. you know? There's, like, the majority, there's the minority, you know? So it's just, like, quite simply, there's fewer of us. Mm. And then you're, like, okay, so who are the Muslims I know? My parents, right? And then I'm a kid, and my parents are my enemy half the time. Right. So, and then everyone's, <laughs> like, you know, and Muslims are the enemy. And I'm, like, well, yeah, these guys right. have already been, like, telling me to clean my room when I don't want to. <laughs> these guys, like, I kind of have some yeah, beef right. with them to begin with. I love them, but, yeah. you know, they're difficult. Yeah. And, uh, and now there's a larger case being made against them. <laughs> you know, where do I fall? What side am I going to be on? And, and I'm Obviously, you know, joking aside, it, it was just this, uh, this, you know, this fear of like not knowing, you know, mm. there's just this not knowing. Mm. And, uh, you know, you, when you don't have information and everything's very emotional, uh, yeah, that self fear was a part that I didn't realize for a really long time. Uh, and then, you know, I think it, it, for me created ultimately, um, an intimacy with my faith and intimacy with the various communities that I'm a part of because there was that fear and then I was like well wait is that true and then realizing of course it's not true uh that you know the way we're being painted has nothing to do with who we actually are and how we live but mm -hmm. there was like a closeness that ended up being created in that quest to figure mm -hmm. that out that I'm actually really appreciative of you know um mm -hmm. just that thing of like yeah going through those experiences but you know being uh yeah being in middle school at the time it's 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 yeah it was wild so you said you didn't have Maybe any other Muslim friends, is that right? Or like there were just a few we other like, families you knew? And... It was like, yeah, it was like two families okay. in our town. Um, mm -hmm. And and then it was, yeah, there was like a couple people we kind of knew, but it wasn't, you know, we weren't in the middle of a community. I know people right. Right. who move uh, to the States, but then they like a bunch of people from their home country get, you know, spots in the same community and they all go to the same activities and do all that. We weren't part of that. Okay, that wasn't right, right. that wasn't what what uh what we had going on. Yeah. So it was maybe like I know that for like a young white kid during this time period it happens to be the same time but just middle school is like 
I'm trying to think of what I might have thought about identity. And I, and I think one of the strange things about whiteness is that it has the myth of like not being an identifier. You know, it's, right. like, it's the sort of, it's the, it's the, 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 the myth of a universal identity. Mm. And now I think like our current middle schoolers are thinking so much about identity, mm. you know, so there's kind of like opposites there. And I'm just wondering maybe if this was like the f one, it must have added a new dimension to the way you were thinking about identity, right? I mean, yeah, it did. I mean, like I already had the, I think it was already front and center just by like not doing Christmas, which is very <laughs> traumatic. Yeah. It's yeah. like mm -hmm. deeply like, whoa, you know, I mean, yeah. this is yeah. big, you know, like, so when you're young and you know the truth about Christmas, it's like a really big burden because you kind of mm. can't tell anybody. The truth? Know? Yeah, the truth. Is it about Santa or Jesus? <laughs> Which one? Uh, it's about Santa. <laughs> we, 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 we rock with Jesus. We do. We, oh, yeah, 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 we yeah, rock yeah. with that's Jesus. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some like different specifics I we should, have on, on I should, Jesus. No, I, but, I actually yeah, do yeah. know that. I want to clarify. Yeah, yeah. We are Baha'i. All three of us happen to be Baha'i. Oh, have you ever heard of the Baha'i faith? Of course. Okay, yeah, so yeah. is this true, Nava and Sophie? I don't think you grew up with Christmas either. No, no. Yeah. yeah, and I grew up in Puerto Rico, which is intensely Christian. They, oh, yeah, they love and Christmas. And there, there aren't even, like, Muslims or Jews, really. There's, wow. like, a few. Not yeah. in my school. So I was the only other religion, and it was yeah. very strange to not celebrate. Yeah, I spent my formative years in the Philippines, yeah. which is, like, very Catholic, very Christmas-heavy. So, yeah, when you said it's kind of traumatic, I was like, I feel you. Oh, right? <laughs> right I mean, just, like, you. to not <laughs> yeah. go, yeah. like, and, and yeah. then you... Yeah, you feel cynical and you know, it's like it's <laughs> yeah. like you don't have an imagination. Yeah. And then I yeah. and you can't say it. I remember being pulled up, like a teacher was like, dude, you gotta really? stop. Wow. You gotta stop saying <laughs> and I'm like, saying what? You know, she's like, that Santa's not real. I'm like, but he's not. And she goes, Yeah, I know, but <laughs> Let's keep but it no, between let's us. just keep it down. And I'm, you know, like, I'm, I, I, I'm getting in trouble for telling the truth. I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> and the thing is, there's like real life is magical. Yeah, like a small yes. seed, yes. I a small agree seed more. becomes a tree. Yes. Why yeah. do we gotta Oxygen. say this? Like Aww. big dude goes through the chimney. I the know. parents don't get credit for like maxing out their credit cards. Right. The whole thing is dark. <laughs> yeah. Like it doesn't make any sense. I fully, fully agree. So all right, and you, still have Christmas. Yeah. It's just the Santa part. Why? Right. You know, yeah, like yeah. we're gonna name this episode "Taking Down Christmas" with Rami. No, but see, but the problem is that'll be really volatile because then like, there's a war against Christmas, which but is it, a whole other. It will be great numbers like, for us, so you will so, fall under so thank the you, Rami. bus. Under there, you're just we're just. I don't want to be part of the war. Okay, here's okay. Here's what I'll say. Uh, in terms of the war against Christmas, mm. I don't like Happy Holidays. I like Merry Christmas, especially when it's mm. Christmas week. Right, because what yeah. other holidays? What other holidays are there? Are there? You this know, last just one, the week of Christmas. Sometimes, though, it will be Hanukkah. This sometimes last, it'll be Hanukkah. Last, so. But but I like I know my friends who do Hanukkah. I know my friends who do you know what I mean. So I yeah, guess yeah. it's like you can okay, be maybe if you're Macy's, you gotta say mm -hmm. it. But don't say happy. You know, let's just say Merry Christmas. Yeah, that's fair. So yeah. just for anyone out there <laughs> who <laughs> might think I have a war against, I really don't have a war against Christmas. I say it's against Santa. Uh, yeah. Who is not in the text? Yeah, who's not real? Yeah, Santa's yeah. not in the text. Fair. None of them. So if we want to get textual, <laughs> yeah, there's no issue with what I'm saying. I'm curious. You describe feeling a more more intimacy with your faith and with your culture, and that's so interesting to me. I feel like you can go one of two ways if you feel like you're not fitting in yeah. with the mainstream. You can either like eschew what you what makes you different, or you can you can embrace it and become really close to it. And I wonder at that young age, I think it's tempting to, to try to fit in. And so what was it in your life? Was your, what did your parents do? What was it in you that sort of pushed you to just become closer and more intimate with the things that made you different? Yeah, I, th I think you're totally right. There's, there's sometimes this um, wanting to erase. And I never, and I just knew that felt really incorrect. Hmm. Mm. I just knew there was too much love I had felt in those spaces. That's cool. And so I said, okay, well, I'm scared. Uh, I have, you know, this is like a, a, I know I'm young and I feel this like information issue and, and, but yeah, so it just, it, it kind of set me on a bit of like a fact finding mission where I was like, okay, I'm scared. It's created a self fear, but I also feel like that's probably off too. I just need to know the truth, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and again, I think the thing that I also felt was like just watching the news and seeing everything, I did know, you know, these are the same people who also propagate Santa. So they're probably mm. lying about this too. 
Yes. I mean, that's true. It's a, <laughs> it's a good that joke, but it's also true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I didn't laugh, because I was appreciating yeah. the profundity yeah. first. You're not wrong. Yeah, I tried to just is. get it you out. Know, you're not, At 10, wrong. he already knew that late-stage capitalism was ruining everything. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me started on the uh, Christmas industrial complex. Uh, <laughs> I have two two follow ups. What was your relationship like with your family? Like, I mean, you made the joke about sort of hating them and loving them, but but like, what was it like? Um, and tell us more about your faith. Sort of like at, at it seems to be a really prominent part of your life. Is it something that you felt early on? Did you ever struggle with your Muslim identity? I'd love to hear more about that. Um, I have the best parents. They're awesome. They're wow. you know the thing. My favorite thing about my parents is that anything that bothers me about our relationship or anything that happened as a kid uh, was truly just like, well, they didn't know. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? It's just like they, ev- yeah. we all, like, it's so None clear. And it's like, yeah. it's like you don't, like, and I think it's also interesting too when you look at grandparents. Because it's like you look at grandparents and you look at parents and you look at how your parents parent and then you can get a vibe off your grandparents. Yeah. And then you're like, and I love my grandparents and they did the best they knew. But it's like mm-hmm. you kind of look at it and, and I was always like, oh, man, my parents are dope. Like they do yeah. things really different from both their sets of parents. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. I really appreciated that. And then any frustration, I was like, well, not everyone can do anything, you know, mm-hmm. uh, um, can do everything. I mean, you know, and, and so uh, – so I, I definitely always had this deep respect for where they were at uh, and what mm-hmm. they were trying to do and, you know, especially, yeah, just not being from this country, right? Yeah. And then I think just the simplest way I can even put the faith relationship was I just, since I was a kid, knew there is this, like I loved praying, like I just loved this private conversation with God, and I knew like, that I do that. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm like, that's real. Like, that's so real. How is that not? It's, I knew it. I yeah. knew it watching your show. <laughs> yeah. I knew it. I yeah. was just like, there's no way this man won't say this today. Of course. And they yeah. even laughed at me because I had yeah. a question about that. That you know, yeah, we can, he does. It, he does. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, I, you know, it's just beautiful to hear somebody say that unabashedly because yeah. you just don't hear it that much. Sure. Yeah. And like, as a, you know, yeah. Or people say it and apologize. Apologize. Right. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. that unapologetic, you know, just clear, direct um, faith, you know, and it, that can mean so many things. It can mean so many things. But it's mm-hmm. like, look, like we all have a relationship with the unseen. Yeah. Right. And so to me, prayer mm-hmm. is this really beautiful, faithful, leading with love connection mm-hmm. to the unseen as opposed to sitting in like only my fears and anxieties, which is also Mm -hmm. like sitting in your fear and anxiety is a form of praying because you're just sitting with the unseen. Yeah, right. You're just sitting sitting with what you can't see, right? But it's like, what version of sitting with what you can't see do you want to have? And so it's like, do you want the one that's aspirational? Do you want the one that's like building something that is, you know, uh, has accountability and has Mm -hmm. love and has, you know, I mean, and I don't blame people for not, saying it really openly just because totally, yeah. you know like religions become like a dark business yeah, <laughs> so much. it's like i'm not I, i'm not yeah. you know the last couple swings at it you know it you know the the, the immediate i would say preceding generations uh not great you know so mm-hmm. i'm totally i get the landscape <laughs> but yeah. also to me this is real yeah you yeah know? Can so, I just say as an aside, sorry, Penn, I know yeah, you're, please, you're please. so happy and you want to jump we, in. We only have uh, <laughs> so much time. And, uh, I, love, I love talking about religion publicly. One of my yeah, favorite things do. to do for a number of reasons. But I think also that it's like not fair to not acknowledge that religion in, in our hands is subject to all the forces that everything else is. So just like science is subject to the forces of late stage capitalism yep. and there's corruption in that. Of course, there's also corruption in religion. It doesn't mean that you throw away science. So why is like why do people who who have faith have to throw away religion or pretend that it's not like a, a part of their lives that is meaningful just yeah. because it's touched by those same forces? Well, it's like anything emotional is, and intimate, you know? right? So it's even like the yeah. business we work in. It's like a set can be the most loving, mm. amazing place that people are at their creative peak doing something that's like an offering for the world. Yeah. Or it can be like a really dark, twisted, ego-driven thing. Yeah. And people mm-hmm. go along with it because they know there's something at the core that's really beautiful, but it's like mm-hmm. in these like really bad hands. And so mm-hmm. it's like you see it in, in almost anything that means anything. It's true. There's yeah. like the version yeah. that's awesome and, you know, you just feel like, 
the most alive you've ever felt. And then there's a version that's just, yeah, dark. It's manipulated. And, it's yeah. true. Yeah, 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 totally. You have found this way to s- almost everything we've been talking about, you have converted into some kind of award winning or in development <laughs> and probably soon to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like, yeah. you don't have to acknowledge it or whatever, but it, se- it seems to be true. Like, you know, from your stand up to your show and to the things you're developing now with your company, it seems like you're just directly translating the things you care most about into like really relatable projects which is ultimately the work of an artist you know i mean it's like so i guess i'm curious about two things Mm. so one is is we at the podcast but also just we culturally don't hear a lot of younger cooler people talking about prayer and like mysticism like like the mystical dimension to religion and spirituality Mm. I'm, and because you said as a child you loved mm. prayer, that to me, like as a person who was not encouraged to pray until I found faith on my own in my 20s mm. and then have just like reclaimed it with such a vigor, you know, and I'm just like, where was this when I was 12 and depressed? You yeah. know, literally. Like, yeah. So I want to hear about what that was just, what was your relationship to pr- to, to, to prayer or to, 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 to that special mysterious place in us all? And, and and then and then and then art like what what was your because that's related to art that's part of yeah. the muse process and what was your relationship mm-hmm. to like what kind of artist were you becoming performer or whatever when I was a kid I just loved cameras mm-hmm. and I think it's because I watched my dad my dad would work like crazy shifts but then he'd come home after doing like an overnight or something and we'd be waking up and he'd pull out the video camera like, he just oh. loved videotaping us. That's cool. Like, it was, like, his, you know, and it, and it was That's that era. Sweet. It sounds sweet. Oh, it's so yeah, sweet. We have yeah, all yeah. the, we have, we're, like, well-documented children. That's cool. <laughs> like, like, I can, like, look back, and I, I, I don't even know if I have memories of being a kid or if I'm remembering the videos, because <laughs> I've seen yeah. them. Like, I'm not sure. That's like kind of precious. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like my memory is, like, online starting, like, 11. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. before that, I don't know how much I actually know. Um... In general, I have kind of not the greatest memory. Like, not, and I don't even. I used to used to frustrate me, but I, I kind of. I, I am very much uh, not wanting to be in the past that much, for better or for worse. Mm. Is just kind of, I guess, how I am. I can't. It's it's mm. it's not even a choice. It's just I'm just like here, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, that the 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 obsession with cameras and making things uh, was really early for me. Like I remember it was the first thing I saved up for as a kid. And I remember waiting for the package to come in the mail. And I don't know if you were, like, just being younger, like, when, like, the, it took forever for something to come. Yeah, it was great. Just yeah. you hear the truck on your uh-huh. street, yeah. and you're like, today might be my day, and then it isn't. And then, you yeah. know, and then it just goes by, and, oh, I'd be yeah. so upset for, like, the two hours after that, you know, because I've been waiting for that sound. Yeah. Um, but I, I was, yeah, I would go around the neighborhood, and I'd make things, and I would, uh, you know, put my friends in them and then I would edit them and then slowly I kind of started to be like, oh, I'll be in something, you know, and I'd put myself in something and it was all really organic because I never thought it would ever amount to anything professional, you know, even to the point where when I left high school, I had just finished doing my last play and I remember telling my high school theater teacher, I was like, oh man, this is the last time I'm going to perform on stage. Wow, that's Uh, interesting. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, yeah, because I got to go to this school. And like, But didn't you study, you studied political science, but didn't you also have some other thing in performing? Yeah, so, well, what happened was, so I'm leaving high school and and I'm going to Rutgers to to study political science and economics. And I... Yeah, I'm like, that's it, you know, because I couldn't imagine that I'd be able to make a career out of what I was doing in high school. But then, you know, my buddies who I was doing sketch comedy with were like, well, let's just go to an improv jam at midnight. And I'm like, okay, ah, I'm like, yeah, I guess I could do that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like I I thought life was just going to turn on and like, Mm. like real world would happen after high school. I was so just blind to anything else. I thought the whole world was just going to change the second I went to college. But then it was like, no, I still like performing. I still like doing these things. And then I was mm-hmm. like, well, maybe I'll take an acting class. You know, like, like it kind of yeah. snuck up yeah. on me until I, you know. But but I never did it thinking it would be a career. So it was, it was in a sense, mm-hmm. when I look back at it, I realize how 
there was something pure about me doing it certainly as a young kid but even the older I got in in that I was just doing it because I loved it and I was like but this mm-hmm. is it's probably gonna end here mm. you know mm. uh, that's pure though that's that beautiful. was yeah it, it that's, had that thing like like and 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 un uh unaware of of it being that but I, I just was like there's no way I don't know anybody um mm. but I really like doing that and then and then I think you know the I guess this is another thing where more more I think about it, even also seeing my dad pray in the morning, you know, right, we're supposed right, to pray right. five times a day. Yeah. I'll just see him do it every morning. And, and I remember thinking, yeah, that's, that looks like a great way to start the day. Uh, <laughs> and you know, we get down on the floor, you put your head on the ground. And I think the older I've gotten, the more I realize just how, uh, it's, in, it's, it's, you can't be in your head too much when you're literally bringing every part of your body down right. to the ground <laughs> in submission to all of this. Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of just there's a reason people have been doing it. You know, like it just there is. And yeah. and, and I and I think that that's mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's so beautiful, you know, to me. I just remember mm-hmm. being, you know, that's beautiful and I want to do it and, and I would do it. That's very cool. The, the reason that it, that it interests me is because depression and anxiety is skyrocketing in our kids yeah you know it just is and you know you actually kind of made the link earlier you you said you said like well in a way you know what what it, some of these aspects of like of anxiety the spiraling and the and the and the revving of the mind is, is is maybe just it's like it is a form of prayer but it isn't as um you might have used the word aspirational you might have used the word i forget which one but you know I think that's a very interesting take on it. And of course, acknowledging there's so much about like the biological aspect of the brain Mm -hmm. that a lot of people will be quick to mention and jump on. I don't, I certainly don't want to like, yeah, but I think, I think, but but I think, but but I think it's also very, you know, well documented that, you know, the the word meditation is much safer to use. Yeah, right. right. Meditation. Mm is highly documented as changing the biological nature of the brain. Like this, this is out there, you know, it's real. It's like, there's no, it's kind of undeniable. It's a hundred percent undeniable. I I, I think that, you know, look, there's, this is what, what you just said really reminds me of is like, I'll say like, I remember, you know, being a kid, uh, of all the dangers of the internet, like as I look back, you know, of all the things that could be pitfalls, I think for a while I was like, man, I really wish I hadn't seen porn when I was a kid. Oh, me too, yeah. yeah. But hmm. I, I, I have a, I've actually, I've just been thinking about this really recently. I think the more I've sat with it, the the thing that I think might have been even worse for me was being invited to create an online profile at a really young age, because there's something about picking your screen name. And your profile photo and your about me mm. and your like broadcast to the whole world that feels so strange because it's like you're forming who you are, but you're kind of like marketing yourself midway. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think it's such a mind fuck yeah. because it's like you, I think, rush to saying who you are mm. in order to project that out into the world. And there's something I think deeply fucked up about that. Yeah. Like, I, I just think it actually, like, halts you. Like, any piece of art, anything, you know, putting anything out too early would be crazy, right? But then it's like, okay, I'm going to tell everyone who I am right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, and, like, here are the nine photos that, like, and this is my personality. And I used to write all this crazy stuff because I felt like I had to say something. Right, you know? right, and, right. And I was like, mm-hmm. why am I even, like... Why? <laughs> Rami, we have a couple of questions we ask every guest. Yeah. So we're not going to let you off the hook. Please. Um, can you tell us about your first love and heartbreak? Oh, man. My first love. Uh... Or crush. Yeah, yeah my first yeah. crush. Yeah, I'm trying to think who my first crush was. There was this girl. I don't even remember her name. I, like, remembered what she looked like, you know, and, and I remember she had this, like, blue dress and she, she was, I guess she was in <laughs> kindergarten class. I just remember when we moved, we were in Queens and we moved to Jersey and I was just like, but what about me and her? Like, we're going to like, you know, like that's, an early, that's an early memory that, that I had. And I remember being too embarrassed to tell my parents. I remember Aww. feeling it was a major factor 
as to why we shouldn't move. Wow. But but I wow. couldn't say it. But I was like, guys, like, what are we talking about? Because like, there's this whole thing going on here. Like, I've been I've been yeah. working on this, and now Can't we're gonna go. Us. Can't remember her name. Or, <laughs> you know, I don't know much. But there was like a blue dress. Jane Doe. I just remember <laughs> I, it's a very Jane Doe situation. Yeah. I remember the blue dress. Uh, I remember the classroom, and then it, it really fades out after that. But that was strong. That was really uh, blue dress. Yeah. Well, after kindergarten, what were your experiences around crushes and No, we were it like? was funny because we also were all we we were right in that prime period of going from dial up into high, you know, right, into like yeah. faster internet or whatever. Mm-hmm. Everything was remarkably online. Like so I remember I had a girlfriend uh in 6th grade. Mm-hmm. I the biggest thing about the girlfriend at the time was that like she was on my AIM profile, mm-hmm. like as my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think wow. I saw her twice at school. <laughs> like I was too shy to talk to her at school. That's pretty. But it was just like, but she's my girlfriend. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. so like everyone knows, like it was kind of like a social thing. It was just like, yeah. but yeah. we didn't, <laughs> we didn't spend any time together. Yeah. I don't think we yeah. ever went anywhere. That's. I feel like that's, that's pretty classic. emblematic of of the, of yeah. a middle school relationship. It's like you you you, you think a lot about it. Yeah. It's established mm-hmm. by other people. It's very important to uh, oh, other like, people. Oh my god, you guys are dating. Well, it's some, it, yeah, it's like a social status, but you guys rarely. <laughs> Dude, there was this one morning we walked in, and it was wild news that happened the night before. It all happened online, where there were two couples. And they switched. <laughs> it was like a, it was like an like NBA trade. It was just like boom, like they're like the whole the tables have turned. Like right. they did a swap. Everyone agreed. You know this is big news, and we were <laughs> oh, we, we couldn't news. stop talking okay. about it for months. I mean it was just, <laughs> it rocked us. I mean we were just it was so wild. We were like how well, that can yeah, happen. <laughs> Everyone agreed. It's like yeah, they were all they all got like they all got on a group call and like they did it. Wow. I was like, yeah, actually, wow. I came as a, and I was like, this is, this is amazing. Yeah, it seems pretty evolved. There's one aspect of it yeah. that the negotiation involved seems pretty, you know, high level. <laughs> they were, I mean, to this day, I haven't seen that work. Right. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen adults pull it off. Yeah. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I've, never seen, that. I've never seen adults pull it off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Rami, the other question we ask everyone, but we can give you like an option. We ask everyone to share an embarrassing story, but sometimes we ask comedians to share a story of like a time they bombed on stage. So I don't know if either of those is more appealing oh, to you. Um, it's like, which time did I bomb on stage? <laughs> so Have many. you ever bombed on stage? No, no, no. Or? It's like yeah. going through the catalog. <laughs> uh, or an embarrassing story from middle school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah whatever you prefer. Were you into comedy by that? You were kind of, right? I love George Carlin. Mm. That's how I would go to my uncle's room and he'd play Carlin. That was, <laughs> mm. and it, would, it I would just be like, wow. You know, because my uncle also talks like Carlin. Everything's a rant. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it's like really just political and theories. And, and he kind of never, he never really turns it off. And I always thought it was so funny because he would just like, you know, I don't know, you just have some, like, theory, you know, and we're younger and just some really passionate opinion about Bill Clinton or something. And you're just laughing because it's just, like, the passion is so yeah. turned on. Like, my family is yeah. so funny in that sense that everyone's just so passionate about what they're saying. And it's like, yeah. conflict or whatever, but everyone's just like, I'm right. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think from since I was a kid, I was like, oh, there's something really funny when someone thinks they're really right. So <laughs> I, I, like, I, I like keeping things, like... I, don't know, I can never assert myself. Be like, I am right. Like, it just feels so funny to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> just be like, I'm right. <laughs> it's just like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> what do you mean you're right? That's nuts. Um, but yeah, being a kid. Uh, oh man, what's the most embarrassing? Well, I used to do this thing that was really crazy. Actually, uh, I had this, and I can't even. There's so many times I did it, but there's. I'll just tell you about the act of what I did. I had I had FOMO really bad. I didn't want to miss out on anything. <laughs> and so I would have to go to the bathroom. Like, I'd have to poop. But I'd be like, well, I don't want to go poop because, like, while I do it, something <laughs> cool could happen. Oh, wow. I love that. But then I'd shit my pants. No. 
Oh, oh Rami, no, no, no. Okay. Then I'd shit my pants. Like, like, so this was a bit chronic. It this was happens more than once. Okay. This was yeah. chronic. Like, I, I would get to the edge, and 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 sometimes everything would die down, and then everyone would go home, and then I could go poop. <laughs> but then there'd be times when. The hang was still going. I didn't want to miss it. So I shit my pants. But then everyone during was like, the hang. yes, during the hang. And then I'm like, okay, if we're outside, I might be able to get away with this. Um, but if we're indoors, like at a certain point, yeah, someone's yeah. like, what's that smell? Yeah. At a certain oh point, someone's God. like, what's that smell? This is a, and this then is real. I got to go home. Yeah. And it's so much worse because it's like yeah. now I have to go all the way home. I could have just went to the bathroom. That is so and this yeah. happened more than once, Rami. There's like three times that are like really <laughs> clear in my mind, which makes me think there's wow. more. Yeah. Because I'm like, if yeah. I can remember yeah. three, your memory is terrible. I'm like, if I can remember, that's what I'm saying. If I can yeah. remember three, <laughs> there's at least gotta nine. It's got to be seven, <laughs> nine. <laughs> I got to be nine deep. It, uh, and I think it was for years. And it probably, wow. I couldn't tell you like the end age, but wow. it's got to be older than it. Should have been. Yeah. <laughs> I I was subbing in a kindergarten class and a kid pooped his pants. I was like subbing as a TA, so yeah. the teacher was still there. He pooped his pants. I had to help him deal with it, and then he went back to the classroom. I had to tell the teacher, and she was, she called him over, and she was really stern. And I was like, Oh no, this is probably why he he pooped his pants. He was like too afraid to ask to go to the bathroom. <laughs> she leans over and she's like. This has to stop happening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh my fun. God. This, how many times? It's been going it's like, on. We've talked about this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he it is. It must have been like you. Rami, is there an adult manifestation of that? Like, do you still have that like <laughs> fear of missing out? No. Really? That's actually gone. It's resolved. Oh. It, it's wow. really resolved. I, I mean, at least socially. I wonder if I have a fear of missing out on other things, but... I don't have that like I gotta be at the hang thing. Mm. Right. Yeah. I I yeah. I actually I was so happy when I met you at the basketball game. I feel like that's when I meet people like that I really like or like I like their work or I've seen them. Yeah. I because I don't I don't actually like go to parties or anything very much. Either, so I'm just like mm. if I see someone Nick's game is a big backstory for a lot of my relationships. Really? Yeah, I'm like, oh, dude, <laughs> it's sorry, proving, the next game. Dude, it's sorry, actually, the next game. you know what? I just started Same going. Ben, it pr- yeah. It's proving to be somewhat similar for me. It's the best. So I'm yeah. ripping the shirt today. It's so good. Yeah. You're, you're like, it's, it's such a great, yeah. like, because I also love watching basketball with people, too, because there's just no, there's no nepotism in basketball. Mm. Mm. It's just like, dude, can you do it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you play mm. defense? Can you put the, yeah. can you put the ball in the basket? Yeah. It's like, wow. That no AI is not replacing that. It's the most, be- it's the most yeah, beautiful no, thing. Yeah, of it's, just, like, it's the most beautiful thing it is. to watch. I got into it in these last two years because my stepson, he started to play very unexpectedly, by the way. Yeah. Like in his middle school years, we were we were all wondering kind of, you know, what's he, what he's gonna be into. None of his parents are into sports in that way. He just pulled basketball out of a hat and he like loves it. Ugh. All the stats. Mm. Dude. All the st- and so that's what our conversations wow. are these days. Yeah. And I really get that. Like I actually it's there's something very interesting there to you know, I grew up very much not into not not into You didn't I, have a sport as a kid. I mean, I had soccer but then because my dad yeah. was a coach it just it turned really toxic really quick and and so I, I actually it. pushed it away for a while. But so the point is growing up didn't have the sport thing and now I'm like having that with with my little middle schooler, he's going to high school now. But so cool. It's, yeah, it's fascinating. It's a fascinating thing to see because I used to roll my eyes at it, and and, and it maybe mm, I think maybe because I felt excluded from it by, yeah. by no one mm. for no real reason. But uh, but now I'm just really appreciating both the like. There's something about watching the game. It's just so present and yes. basketball in particular because my sport was, if anything, soccer. Yeah, basketball is like it is so fast. Mm-hmm. And it's like chess because it's so high scoring. So you just know, like, you're just always chipping away. You know what I yeah. mean? There's something about it that I find really, really elegant. Re- like, just really beautiful, incredibly intelligent. Rami, I want to know, not because of the idea itself, which is so brilliant, but because of the narrowness of the culture, it seems so improbable that Rami would have been made. Yeah. Tell us, Walk us through that process, like conceiving it, pitching it, having it greenlit. And then... Also, you winning the Emmy is my first memory of you because you seemed totally 
unprepared for the win. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but I really want to know what it was like when you won it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's funny. So it was it was the Globes, and but it also might as well have been like uh, it's cool. Like uh, awards are just awards. Like I've mm. you know New York's like, dude, you're the guy I who won the Oscar. Same, yeah, right. <laughs> you won the Oscar, <laughs> and I'm just like. Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. It, it, was, yeah. it was a did. globe, right? Not an Emmy. Or wait, which one was it? It I doesn't forget. even matter. <laughs> it, it actually was an Oscar. Like uh, I got yeah, an Oscar. Yeah, yeah. For, was it a Peabody? A yeah, Grammy. it was a Nobel. I got a Peabody. I did get a Peabody. He does have a Peabody for you Mo, have a Peabody. Right? That's I have right. Two. Yeah. But amazing. you don't have a Pulitzer. That's Mona. Uh, Mona's got the Pulitzer. Right. Okay. Mona's got the Pulitzer. It's hard to keep track of. Coming. And it's Coming. Awards. you know, uh, Mona. Yeah. Mona's. She talks about it a lot. The Pulitzer too. Mona Shadabi, if anyone goes, I mean, she's a great artist uh, that can't stop talking about her Pulitzer. So if you see her in the street, unless you want to talk about Pulitzers, don't talk to her. Avoid Mona at the all street. unless you'd like to talk about a Pulitzer. Otherwise, <laughs> go to her Instagram, Mona Shadabi, great art. Yeah. Uh, Pulitzer listen to our old episode with her. Uh, yeah. Yeah. At the time, didn't have a Pulitzer. Yes, That's exactly. Yeah, what true. do you do a new episode? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want an hour plus about Pulitzers. Um, the, uh, you know, the making of it was, um, it was really cool. Uh, my buddy, Ari Kacher, uh he had been making Carmichael show. We'd known each other for years. And I moved to L.A. I acted on a multi-cam sitcom. Uh, for a few years when I first got there. Which one? And it, it's this thing on Nick at Night uh, called Seed Head Run. It was with huh. it was with Scott Bayo and wow. and Mark Curry from Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Wow. Wow. So it was like Nick at Night was trying to do like a throwback sitcom thing. And it was one of those things that they like made but didn't market. It was and you know, at the time as a young actor, it was the perfect job because you're getting the experience, mm. but also like No pressure. No pressure. Maybe. Yeah. No. But what was really cool was Mark Curry um, was touring doing stand up. And I told him, hey, I've been doing sketch comedy. I've been making videos since I was, you know, I've been doing all these things. And right before I moved to LA, I tried stand up a few times. And he said, really? I said, yeah. And, and, and then he, uh, he asked me if I was doing a show in LA. And, and I had something set up. So he comes and watches me, which I didn't think he would ever do. And then uh, he's like, cool, you're going to come on the road with me. You know, and so I got this great experience mm. opening for this awesome comedian. Uh, and it, it, out of nowhere, I was just able to like build up material. And so my buddy Ari and I, we had gone to like my first ever LA open mic together. I'd, and then, you know, I do this multicam thing. He was making a multicam show, the Carmichael show on NBC. So we just started batting around, let's do a multicam show together. Mm. But then as I built out my hour long, stand up and all that I was like oh I think it's more of a a single cam show because I want to get into some some stuff that I don't think is going to work in front of a live studio audience right and yeah. anyone who's seen the show it, yeah, it is not possible yeah, to it's do it's in not, front of a live studio audience not, not even remotely. <laughs> it's not even there's not much that that could happen uh so yeah I built up uh it was funny I had this really funny mishap at the at the laugh factory where I they put me up and two comedians who were supposed to go up after me were in the same car and they were late because the they got stuck in traffic. So, oh, so you had more before time. I go on, they're like, just run, oh, just wow. vamp. That's cool. And so I accidentally, you know, end up having this tape at the Laugh Factory of me doing like 45, 50 minutes. Whoa. Which is this wow. like holy grail of like, and I'm up there pulling and I'm like, here's an idea I kind of have thought of and here's like a thing and this and that, that, that. And then I end up having this tape. Um... And so we just kind and of... And it went well, I guess. Yeah, it went yeah. well. And it had a bunch of premises that ended up being all over our first season of the show. We used mm. that tape. We sent it to networks. We had kind of teamed up with Ravi uh, Nandan um, uh, at A24. And we were kind of one of their first shows. It was like us in Euphoria. Wow, okay. And, uh, mm. and so we just went out and, and, and pitched it. And, uh, and at the time, it was like really just right place, right time because Hulu was just in this position where they said, okay, we want to do original content in a real mm. way. Mm. They had mm. kind of messed around a bit with it, but they wanted to take like a real comedy push. They had had one original comedy. Um, I'm blanking on it, but it, it was it was really cool, actually. Mm. They, 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 they just only, you know, played around with it a little bit. And so we were part of their initial, you know, thing to kind of put some new comedies. It was us, Pen15, mm. right, uh, right. and I love them. And uh, Sarah Silverman love did a show as well. Yeah. And so we, yeah, we kind of got in there and uh, 
it was cool. It was just like this opening in the the boom of of the streaming at the time, mm-hmm. right? Streaming's a totally different business oh, yeah. now. Oh yeah. We made yeah. that show deal with them before Handmaid's Tale had even come out, right? What? Wow. Yeah, this is really wow. wild. Okay. So I've been in development working with them, you know, since 2017, right? Wow. So wow. yeah, we've made three seasons in 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 that time, you know. Uh mm. but uh yeah, so it was cool. I mean, like it was it was people were really receptive to it. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and the stand-up definitely helped and, and it was kind of clear like what we were getting at. And and I think the the thing, you know, that was really cool about it too was once we got into making the show, we got to make the one we wanted to make. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel <laughs> that's, amazing. that's the great thing about having a small budget. Yeah. Uh yeah. is that they're they don't Totally. overnote you because they're like well no, that's actually so that that's much. really cool to hear yeah yeah that's really cool were you unprepared at the globes or like not unprepared like you should have written a speech but like were you not expecting it that's what it seemed like watching at home but i don't know if that's accurate i think it was like surreal you know mm. i think going in there's all this stuff is always so funny you know how it is it's like i know exactly all these what it's like ins- to be surprised by a golden globe win you're <laughs> no, right it's like, yeah, it's, no but you know how the, the awards stuff and all the but like it's like you have pr people and you have yeah, like your yeah, agents yeah. and whatever and everyone's got tabs on everything and they're like all right like so i kind of went into the night knowing they're like okay you know you're 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 the, you're the dark the horse, sure. you know. Mm. Like you know, there's. Yeah. We, we think it might go one of two ways, you know. Oh, so it's kind of like that thing. Everybody loves a dark horse. Yeah, everyone loves yeah. a dark horse. People love dark horses. Yeah. Uh, so I, I kind of, yeah, I had an idea that maybe, mm. right? But I think mm-hmm. what you saw in me was probably just like overwhelming. I, it was gratitude. I was just like, wow, yeah. I can't believe yeah, was, this. Right. And then being out there and looking out at all these people and 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 I just said yeah. the first thing that was on my mind, which is I'm just like looking at Scorsese and I just say, okay, dude, like, I know you haven't seen my show. I have, I'm positive. <laughs> I'm, so positive. I'm actually so positive. Good. And, yeah. and that's where I was just like, you know what? I, and then I looked up and I said a few things. I don't remember everything I said, but I said a few things and then I looked up and there's a clock and it tells you how much time mm. you have left. And I had like almost a minute left, but it was just, this is where being a, a comic was just the greatest gift in a moment sure, like that. Course, I was just yeah. like, just get out on the laugh. There's no need. You mm-hmm. don't need to do the other minute. And I was just like, all right, see yeah. you. Good night. Like, let me get out of here. And, uh, yeah. you know, it was, it was a beautiful moment. I think because of that, I was just, yeah. you know, I was very grateful for it. I still am very yeah. grateful for it. And, and it was, uh, you know, it, it meant a lot to my parents, which was really cool. Right. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. It was I- fun. Love Rami. I feel like it's a masterpiece in so many ways. And it, it's a show that's meant a lot to me as someone who grew up religious, growing up in a, a religion that was a minority religion that not many people knew about. And um, yeah, it's it's meant a lot to me. I love Thank that you. show. You've rightfully so received uh, a lot of praise for being maybe one of the first shows to represent like a modern Muslim American experience. But then also a little bit of backlash, I think, from some Muslims about the character of Rami being, like, flawed and maybe not not the first representation that people want of of their experience. And I wonder, I've also heard you say some really profound and thought-provoking things about the importance of being able to question faith and how Rami does maybe provide that space for people to question their faith. And I wonder what your response is to the critics who say that Rami is like a negative representation of a Muslim. Yeah, I mean, he might be for for you, you know, for whoever feels that way. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. I think what's really cool is like um, getting to create from the idea that there can be a bountiful amount of stories, you know, that come from people in our communities and in our tradition. And so I go in believing that. I think, uh, you know, anytime there, anytime you make something, there's like really valid critiques. So it's like there are things that that, that have come out that are super valid. But then there Mm -hmm. are like critiques that have the weight of um, scarcity of like, how Hmm. could you do that when this is our chance or you Mm -hmm. could be the flag or this is what we've got or everything is so bad and like you know so it's like all that is just that's like scarcity that's fear um i've always just made the show that i want to watch 
you know, I've made the thing mm-hmm. that feels relevant to what I would want to see and especially what uh, past versions of myself would have really appreciated at different points in my spiritual journey. And that the mm-hmm. Rami character is crafted with that in mind for me and all the characters in the show sit in that. And so when that hits with people, they really appreciate it and they really love it. But it's also like anything that that I think um, is you know, potent or going for a certain vein. When you don't like it, you really don't like it, you know? And mm. and I think uh, what's been fun for me is getting to just focus on the thing that I think could work. Because I think when you try to do too much or you try to do it for everybody, um, quality usually takes a real dip because it just stops being um, direct. And yeah. so uh, what's been fun, though, because because it has worked – for us as a story, we've gotten to make other things, right? So we're developing this animated show. We also got to make uh, a show with Muhammad Amr. You know, we made Mo on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And that's a character that I think is, you know, much more um, in line. Like, I think the critiques you're talking about are like, oh, I want to see someone who's like, you know, fighting against the system and I really root for them and you know and and I think what was really cool about doing Mo with him was getting to go in and say okay like we can actually make that type of story too Mm. Uh, Mm -hmm. and that also aligns with what Mo wants to say and has to say in his Mm. comedy so I think it's just Mm. really important to kind of find like the specificity to the person. So I know if I tried to do this show where it's like everyone's rooting for me and it's like, oh, I'm just this like lovable Muslim guy and like someone's like being mean to me at work, like it doesn't fit who I am because I'm like, you know, I'm like a like a little like I'm like a little like you know, mischievous shit. Like my mom would be like, That's not you, you little you know. You know, so it's like not that she's like thrilled with everything I do on screen, but like, you know, and 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 the character isn't me, but but it, it fits my sensibility. It's the type sure, of show yeah. I like. I like getting mm. up to the line. I like sometimes crossing it mm. and then walking back. That's I just like mm. doing it in stand-up. And again, we take a lot of swings. I'm very grateful that we connect on a lot of them. Some of them we miss on. But at least mm. it's like I'm playing the, the thing I want to do. I'm playing in the tone I want to play in. But yeah. then it was really mm-hmm. fun to just like go and make this other show, and it's like a whole other world, whole other tone. Uh, so, yeah, it's just about like, you know, and then we're, we're higher, like – there's so many people who had never been even near a writer's room that are now have writing credits and have mm-hmm. experience from working on our shows uh, that are going to tell their stories that yeah. kind of fit, you know, from our communities. And that's amazing, I can't wait man. to see those. Like, that's, that's, that's like kind of my favorite amazing, part of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. like there's all these people who got to see how it gets made. And then, you know, yeah, there's people who have worked in any of the rooms we've done that I'm like, cool, I can't wait to like come in and work for you on your thing like what do you want me to do mm-hmm. like yeah. how do I I'm, how am I going to help you on your thing no, that's, you know? that's, yeah. that's really I mean what I admire in, in what you're it's not the only thing but it's it's something that I really admire in what you're doing and I'm, I'm realizing it more as you say it because it is true that like the writer's room as a construct is a place that so few people have historically had any access to yeah. it's just really inspiring to, 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 to meet and see and hear about other people doing it like doing it and succeeding like that's really amazing, you know? It's so mm-hmm. important that, I mean, we hear this. It's become it's becoming a platitude almost, but it's very true. Like, we need to hear other voices. Yeah. TV is massively systemic. And so if mm-hmm. you can get people into a television writer's room, that's a huge achievement, I think. So mm-hmm. that's cool. No, it's really cool. And, and, I, and I think, you know, we've learned a lot doing it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll learn a lot you know, a lot more, but, uh, yeah, that getting in is really, is really key because, you know, and, and, and you know this too, and just working on stuff, it's like you get an opportunity and you're like, all right, well, I, we need to make sure it's good. Mm. Who's done it before. Right. Right. So it's like, who's done it? So it's like, there's a reason why people keep rehiring the same people because it's like, you know, like we have to deliver. Right. You know, and, Mm. and, and, and so there's a line of like how much you can experiment and how much you can kind of throw people who are new and green. And then also, so I think we've always tried to have this balance of like, you know, who has never been in a writer's room and who, you know, wrote on Roseanne. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how do we, how do we all get together here? Like, who's the guy that's like been around? You know, all right, yeah. let's see. Like, what can you offer us? You know what I mean? And mm. and then who are the people who who really uh, 
you know, just have something totally left field who are new, who just have, you know, this, the, the raw, you know, thing. And then, and so, so that's been really fun. I'm intrigued by the decision to name the character Rami because there's got to be, you've got to know, go into it knowing that there's going to be many people who collapse the two of you yeah. into one. So what was the thinking behind that? I mean, this is kind of what I said a moment ago of like learning a lot, you know, probably. <laughs> <laughs> what was the thinking? Yeah. Wasn't thinking about that. I'll tell you that. I was thinking about like plot lines and I was like, whatever, yeah. my name. Yeah. Like it was that. Yeah. Yeah. It ended yeah. there. Yeah. I didn't want the show to be that. called Rami. <laughs> like they, I found out in a press release. Wow. Because we, oh, wow. It, like someone had floated it and then we were yeah. like, oh, and it does we work. Were, we were playing with different, I didn't want it to be Rami because a lot of people say my name Rami. Mm. And so I mm -hmm. openly said to everybody, producers, network, I was like, there's going to be a problem here, like a marketing problem if the show is mm. called Rami because people aren't, don't know the word. They're not going to know how to say it, like whatever. Yeah. And, um, and I was right. Yeah. <laughs> there was a small, <laughs> yeah. It's a marketing problem, um, which is fine. I'm grateful for it. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's like it, it truly yeah. is one of those things, too, where like getting to make it the right people find the show. You know, yeah. I hope we've kind of put something together that like you could watch even five years, 10 years, 15 years from now and take mm. something from it. So that was always yeah. the goal in that, you know, it doesn't need to be like the biggest thing. And, and I think we've, you know, had wins that, you know, not even just award stuff, but just even like, mm. we definitely cut through in a certain way, which is really, mm. really exciting. Yeah. Right. Sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, not a lot of thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rami, can you spill the beans on your new project, Poor Things? Tell us something scintillating, something you haven't maybe shared yet. <laughs> Oh, man. Make sure it's juicy. Um, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> I mean, the movie is, uh, I love your ghosts, you know, I, I like organically. It's not one of those things where it's like, because I got to work with him suddenly. You know, I know mm -hmm. I was always obsessed with him. I was always kind of, you know, hitting up my buddies from high school being like, have you seen The Killing of a Sacred Deer? Like, you have to watch this movie. Mm -hmm. It's so insane. And I remember seeing his first film, Dogtooth, and just being like, this is so deeply you know, fucking weird. And I love it. And this film, I think, is... It's like everything I loved about Dogtooth mixed with everything I loved about The Favorite. And then, mm. you know, it's also just its own thing. And so uh, I love the tone. I love, like, how much of a tightrope walk the story is. And, you know, it's like... It's a really feminist film. Like, it's, like, mm. the most mm. fucked up way to talk about feminism. But, like, I think it's really effective in doing it. And I think that's mm. really largely owed to Emma. Uh, it, it's it's probably my favorite Emma Stone performance ever. And I think uh -huh. she's an unbelievable actor. So yeah, she, that yeah. says a lot. And, and what she did and what she crafted is really, really cool. Uh, and getting to see her, you know, do it. And then seeing it cut into the film was was really yeah really impressive, oh, yeah. So exciting. Yeah, I thought that of her too when we were doing UZA. I just thought this is my <laughs> this is my favorite. Actually, at the time, that probably movie would have so been good though. But that yeah, movie yeah, is yeah, so her. no, it's it so is. funny and like yeah. you can yeah. tell from then you're like oh this person yeah. has emotional access like on another level. Very much. Yeah. 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 Rami, I want to ask you just one more thing professionally. Yeah. You're directing now. So I know you directed on Rami. You've directed an episode of The Bear. Is that right? Yes. Can you sort of talk oh, cool. about what that's like for you? Yeah. Um, and in Rami, like, when do you choose to direct and not to direct an episode? Are mm. there sort of, is there a strategy? I always go into a season of Rami saying I want to direct the ones I'm not in, which ends up being None. kind of a, no, actually, like, a lot. Because I'll, like, Wait, you but know, you're not, but. Uh, look, it, by the time we get to the third season, it's like I'm in like half the season. It's oh. like really fun. Mm -hmm. I stand and the through it. So the not, ones that I watched, you were in. I could. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the ones you watch, I'm, I'm in. But but um, I, I always go in with that intention. But even like season two, uh, I ended up having to direct a lot of the ones I was in just by the nature of the mm -hmm. schedule because we'll be like cross right, yeah, shooting right. and and all that. Mm -hmm. But in general, mm -hmm. I really like directing when I'm not acting. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I guess I have fun doing it when I'm acting too. But um, mm -hmm. You know, doing something like The Bear was really fun because uh, I have a really great relationship with Chris Storer, who made the show, mm. and 
we have a shorthand, but also we do things differently. And so it was this really fun opportunity also because it was an episode in Copenhagen. And so nice. I was like, well, yeah. I got to go do research, right? Mm-hmm. And so you're just like talking <laughs> to someone at like Disney travel and they're like, how long do you want to stay? Uh, yeah. And you're like, well, I need, I need wow. weeks really to figure out <laughs> what I'm doing here. Uh, but it really was great to just go there and do that. And so, yeah, for me, direct, it's so fun. It, it almost oddly feels like what I liked about anything artistic when I was a kid, which was just kind of having mm. the camera and then getting to edit mm. it and thinking of the music that goes on it. And 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 I really love working with actors and, and kind of breaking down a script just because we do it so much when we're acting. And then totally, to yeah. get yeah. to do it on the other end is, uh, yeah, it's just like very fun. You know, I, I really love photography. So um, that's just like a hobby of, of mine. Like, and uh, it, it feels like I get to bring in that when when doing that too so mm. so that's mm. yeah it's it's like a really mm. fun part of the thing for me yeah well man i mean we're not ending on a laugh but uh, <laughs> you mean, could edit was, it so that we was, end on a laugh oh no we don't have time for that <laughs> you don't do it okay uh no we, will. No, we, we probably do. will we'll mm. take out the bit about um the bear and we'll just <laughs> we'll figure it out we'll we'll go back to something about masturbation and prayer and you know we'll figure, we'll figure it out <laughs> Um, we actually didn't touch on masturbation. A I was show, like, you brought both, that in into way, the conversation. Iconic, I would have, I'm going to say it. We're both iconic masturbators we're, in our own yeah. way. <laughs> For sure. Privately, we pray. Publicly. Publicly, we're... We I know. <laughs> we're, we're, that's, you have to rhyme it. Find a way to rhyme I it. Wish I, I wish I hadn't, <clears throat> but I did say it. Yeah. <laughs> That's another one. You have control of the edit here, and I think that you <laughs> no, could use it. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Um, we do actually have a last question. We do have a last yes. question. Uh, uh, if you could go, it's a left turn now back from back iconic back to the back to the yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> this might this might apply yeah. given the age. Oh my God. What what if you could go back to twelve year old Rami? Yes. What would you say? If if anything. I, genuinely, I think I would say, like, because any specific advice would be too tough, right? Because yeah. as a kid, you're like, it's too much. I think the thing I would say is, believe me, being so hard on yourself is not actually that helpful. Mm. Like, mm. It, it's not actually that helpful. I think I had that, like, Kobe mentality of, like, you got to be mm. tough on yourself. You know, like... Right. But I feel like I feel like Kobe kept that on the court in a way. But I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I can't speak for him. But maybe it just works for him. But I think that like we really, especially the immigrant mentality is like, yo, like let's we gotta mm-hmm. you know be tough on yourself, work hard, get mm-hmm. there. You know, like there like everyone kind of has this um, this thing. I think it's very pervasive in our culture, like in general, like just American culture. But I think I think that's what I would try to really get through to twelve year old Rami. Like don't all this like beating up of yourself and all this like really tough, harsh inner dialogue right. that you think is shaping you into something better is not, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah, but it's hard to tell like a 12 a year old to love themselves. It's a very difficult thing. Yeah, that's well, <laughs> it's a yeah, very, that's, like, yeah. That is true. It's, it's, it's hard to tell a, an adult to love themselves, yeah, you know, and actually have that be taken, you know, sincerely. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I feel like the conversation went to went to so many places that were a pleasant surprise and and i mean mm-hmm. honestly man the the best of continued success oh it's, you too man uh Bob, this is so cool thank you guys for having me this was really fun you can watch rami on hulu you can check him out in poor things and you can follow rami youssef online at rami He was born in 91, I think. He's younger than Taylor Swift. That's my reference for everyone. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs>